In Lesson 7, we're going to go through the process of creating a two-column newsletter. I've already created a new LibreOffice Writer document, and I've used the File Save As option to save this as Lesson 7 Newsletter. The next step is to import the page and paragraph styles that were created back in Lesson 4. So, in the sidebar, We'll select the Styles and Formatting option, and then we'll go to New Style, Load Styles, and in the Load Styles dialog box, we'll toggle all of the options on. We'll select From File, and then we'll go find our Lesson 4 document, and Open, and now you see the paragraph styles from the Lesson 4 document have been imported, as well as the page styles. So now we'll save this version of the Lesson 7 newsletter. With the text cursor at the very beginning of the document, we'll go to the sidebar, we'll make sure the styles and formatting option is on, and then we'll select the page styles option and we'll double click on my first page. The title we inherited from My Lesson 4 is not the one we want, so we're going to create a new title using the Properties option for this document. So I will go to File, Properties, Title, and then I'll enter My LibreOffice Writer Newsletter. And select OK to close the dialog box. Now I want to replace this title, so I'll highlight that old paragraph, and then I'm going to insert the new title field. So I will select Insert, Field, Title. And now I have the current title field entered in as the title of this document. And now I'll place the cursor at the end of that paragraph enter a new paragraph, and I'll insert a date field there. So I'm in the Insert tab, I'll select Field, Date, and I want to reformat that date, so I'll double click on it. And for this example, I think I'll select just the Month and Date option, then select OK. And now, before I forget, I better save the work I've done so far. Just as a reminder of how easy it is to modify paragraph styles once they're in place, let's modify our title paragraph style here. So I'll go back to the sidebar, select the paragraph style option, I'll right-click on my title paragraph and select Modify. This opens up the Paragraph Style dialog box for the My Title Paragraph Style. I think I'll change the Border Style here, so I'll click on the Borders tab. I'm going to change the Line Width to 0.15. I'm going to increase the Padding to 0.12. And you notice that as long as the synchronize box is checked, it changes the padding for left, right, top, and bottom all at the same time. If I move this dialog box aside a little bit, I can select the Apply button and see if I like the changes. Notice how it added padding here. Let me go to the Area tab and choose a bitmap And I'll try the sky bitmap and apply that. Next, I'll switch to the font effects tab and make sure that the shadow option is turned on. And I think I'll change the font color. Maybe I'll change it to blue. I'll apply that, and if I like it, I can close the dialog box. 
And if I like that, I better save the changes. This newsletter is going to have two columns, so I have to go in and modify the page styles. Back to the sidebar, collect, select the page styles option, right click on my first page, say modify, then I'll go to columns and go to two columns and there's spacing of 0.2 inches between columns and I like that so I'll say OK then I'll repeat that process for the left and right pages I need some text for this uh, demonstration newsletter and to do that I'm going to go off and borrow some from the internet. If you're using the PDF file for this lesson it's very easy to use the link to the internet to find the sample text that I'm using here. Before I jump to the internet though I'm going to highlight the words plant taxonomy and I'm going to control C copy those words. Then I'm going to click on the link. That will open my web browser. In this case, I'm using the Firefox web browser. And that jumps to the Wikipedia website. In the Wikipedia search box, I'm going to press Control V to paste the words plant taxonomy. And then that jumps to the page where I'm going to borrow some text for my newsletter. I've copied the first two paragraphs of the Wikipedia article by pressing Control C. That places those paragraphs into the secret clipboard. Before I paste this text into my newsletter, there's a couple of things I need to do. I'll put the cursor in the first paragraph, and I'll notice that that's using still the default style, and I want to use my text body paragraph. So over in the sidebar, I'll double click on my text body paragraph. And now that I've confirmed that that's the paragraph style in use, I'm not going to paste the text because that may import some formatting from Wikipedia that I don't want to use. Instead of pasting that text from the clipboard, I'm going to go to the menu bar. I'm going to select edit. Then I'm going to select paste special and then I'll select paste unformatted text and when I do that let me scroll back up when I do that it will use the my text body paragraph style if I click any place in the first paragraph here you'll see that's that's what's happened second paragraph the same thing by using the edit paste special paste unformatting text, any paragraph format or text formatting that was used in the Wikipedia article or for wherever I'm copying this from, that will be replaced by the current paragraph format of my document. We need a heading for this part of our newsletter, so I'll press Control Home to put my cursor at the beginning of the document, then I'll press the Enter key, and now I can do this a couple of ways. The order doesn't matter. I'm going to make this paragraph use the heading one paragraph style. I can go back to the Wikipedia article and I can copy the words plant taxonomy, control C, and then return to my document and do the edit paste special, paste unformatted text, and then my heading will be using the heading one paragraph style. You could do it the other way around. You could enter the text and then you could change the heading paragraph style. Either way, you get the same result.
That was so much fun. Let's add some more text to our newsletter. I'm going to press Control End to jump to the end of the document. Then I'll create a new paragraph. And once again, I'm going to use the heading one style and enter the name Carl Linnaeus. Now, when I press enter to go from a heading one paragraph style to a new paragraph, the default paragraph style that follows heading one is text body. But I don't want to use the default text body style. I want to use my text body style. So I'll go to the sidebar and double click on that. Now I'm going to go back to Wikipedia and in the search bar I'm going to enter Carl Linnaeus and see what that brings up. And here is a nice article about Carl Linnaeus. Carl Linnaeus is known as the founder of modern botany. He's the one who formalized the naming system for plants that we still use today. I'm going to select the first three paragraphs in this article and then copy the paragraphs to the clipboard. And then I'll go back to my document and with the My Text Body paragraph selected, I'll use the Edit, Paste Special, Paste Unformatted Text trick again. And there that text will be entered into my document. When I imported this text from Wikipedia, it brought in a lot of extra blank paragraphs. I'm just going to go quickly through here and delete each one of these blank paragraphs because the paragraph spacing that I use from my text body paragraph takes care of that. I don't have to have extra blank paragraphs for spacing. Now let me scroll down and place the cursor next to Carl Linnaeus' heading. And the same way that we copied and pasted text, we can also copy and paste images or pictures into our document in pretty much the same way we copied and pasted text. Let me go back to the Wikipedia article. And I see the picture of Carl Linnaeus here. Let me left click to select that. That makes it bigger. Now I'm going to right click on the image and from the context menu I'm going to select copy image. That'll put it in the clipboard again. And now I'll go back to my document, place the cursor where I want it. There are no paragraph styles involved this time so I can just use control V, the shortcut for paste. Whoops, what happened? Let me scroll up here and see what happened. Well, you see the size of that picture is a little too big for the space that I want. So let me double click on the image. And this opens up the image dialog box. I'll go to the type tab, make sure that keep ratio is toggled on. And then I'm going to enter a width of one and a quarter, 1.25. I want to make sure that I'm placing the position of that picture to the right of the paragraph and then with the wrap tab selected I'll use wrap before and then I'll put a little spacing of 0.2 between the image and the text. I'll add a border and borders all four borders as a matter of fact and just for variety this time I'm going to select the cast shadow to top left option and see what happens. There are a couple more samples of text and pictures to import into the document. They're listed in some detail in the printed tutorial, so I'm going to jump ahead at this point. I've jumped ahead and I've added the article about Rudbeckia and then I've added a paragraph about Olaf Rudbeck and now I'm going to put a caption on the Olaf Rudbeck picture. So I'll right click on the picture and then I'll select insert caption. I'll select category none. You notice if I pause here a minute 
you notice that there are a lot of things. If I wanted to have this be an illustration or a figure, you notice it would put the figure and a number in front of the text. But in this example, I'm going to select none. Then I'll type my caption. And then I'll select OK. Now I have to scroll back down to where the picture is. You notice that if I click on the caption paragraph, that captions have their own paragraph style. However, it's possible to change that style. In this case, I'm going to do it manually. I'm going to select the, cap, the text in the caption. And then over here in the sidebar properties settings, I'm going to select a font. And for this example, I think I'll use the Arial font. And instead of 12, I'm going to make this 10. And I'll make it bold. And I'll make it a line center. Then I click away. And once I've made some changes, I better not forget to save this version. I've jumped ahead by following the instructions in the printed tutorial, and I've added articles about Johannes Rudbeckius and Alfred Nobel. And then at the beginning of the document, I've added a little section in this issue and a paragraph there. You should go ahead and do that. And when you come back, We'll see how to insert a table of contents into a document. Now with my text cursor in a paragraph right below the In This Issue paragraph, I'll go to the menu bar and I'll select Insert, Table of Contents and Index, Table of Contents, Index, or Bibliography. And then in the Table of Contents dialog box, I want to make sure that the title says Table of Contents. And just for fun, I'm going to select the Background tab, choose Color, and I think I'll use a light lime color for this. And let's see what we get. And now you see that table of contents has been inserted into our document. And the table of contents has automatically discovered the heading one paragraphs and automatically listed the page where each of these paragraphs is found. When you create a table of contents in a document, the paragraphs used in the table of contents will be default paragraph styles. For example, if I place the text cursor in the title, you'll see that this uses the contents heading paragraph style. If I place a text cursor in any of the entries, you'll see that those use the contents one paragraph style. Now it would be possible for me to go and create custom styles for my table of contents. But there's another alternative, and that's to edit the style that's being used. And there's a shortcut way to do that. I'm going to right click in the table of contents title paragraph, and then I'm going to select paragraph, edit style. And this opens up the paragraph style dialog box but it opens it up for the contents heading paragraph. I'm going to go in here and select alignment, center. Let me move this aside so we can see what happens. I'll select apply, and you see now I've modified that paragraph style. So I'll select OK, and I'll do a similar thing for the contents one paragraphs. I'll say Paragraph, Edit Style, and now I have the Paragraph Style dialog box for Contents 1 style paragraphs. 
Now, I don't like the way the uh, paragraphs here are jammed up to the margins of the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the indents and spacing. So before the text, I'll make it a quarter of an inch or 0.25. And after the text, I'll also make it 0.25. And each time I make a change here, I can apply that to see if I like it. Yeah, I think I like that a little better. So now I'll adjust the font. And I'm going to choose the Arial font. And I think bold, maybe 10.5 type. Let's see what that looks like by selecting Apply. Well, maybe let's check 11 point type and see if we like that better. Apply. Uh, just a subtle difference. Once I'm satisfied with my changes to the contents one paragraph style, I'll select OK. Let me choose the book view display option and then let me zoom out and see what this document looks like. It looks like poor Uncle Olaf is falling off the bottom of the page a little bit. Let me zoom back in and make an adjustment to that. Single page view. Zoom in. Here's the Uncle Olaf paragraph. What I think I'll do is I'll try inserting a forced page break here. I, I place the cursor at the beginning of Olaf, and then I hold the control key down and press the enter key. Well, that forced Uncle Olaf's paragraphs to the next page, but it did not do anything with the picture. It's still anchored back here. So let me click, not on the picture itself, but I want to click on the frame of the picture and drag that over here and I'll make sure it's right justified and I like that a little better so I'm going to save that version and now I'll go back to the table of contents now whenever you change anything that will move paragraphs around especially in the table of contents especially the heading one paragraphs you need to make sure that the table of contents has been updated. So I'm going to right click on my table of contents and I'm going to say update index. And that way the index will show Uncle Olaf on the proper page. I'll scroll down to reveal the left header paragraph. I think I'd like to modify that header a little bit. So let me right click on that, select paragraph, edit style, and I'm going to add borders and the borders I'll add will be top and bottom borders only and then I'll select area and maybe use a bitmap and use the sky or aqua I think I'll use the sky bitmap let's apply that let's go back to the borders tab because this seems a little close what if I change the padding to 0.4? That gives a little more space there. So I'll say OK. And when I scroll down, you'll see that the paragraph style for the right header is also changed. And that's because when we created that paragraph style, we had the right header paragraph inherit styles from the left header. Let's talk for a minute about widows and orphans. No, not orphans in an orphanage, but in typesetting. In typesetting, widows and orphans are lines at the beginning or end of a paragraph which are left dangling at the top or bottom of a column. And they might be separated from the rest of the paragraph. So most document designers don't like to see a page or column begin or end with a single line or maybe they don't even like two lines or three lines. They want to make sure that the, that the widows and the orphans are, are all joined together. There's also a way we can control hyphenation of words. So let's make a few adjustments now to our document. I'll right click in a text body paragraph and then I'll select paragraph 
edit style and in indents and spacing I think that that half inch in the first line is a little too much when I have columns here I'm going to reduce that first line spacing to a quarter of an inch and I can apply that to see the result then I'll select the text flow tab and hyphenation right now it's off so I'm going to turn hyphenation automatically on and I'll also check out the orphans controls here the default setting is for two lines let me increase that to three lines for both widows and orphans and say OK. Now I need to save that version and if I select the book view option and zoom out quite a bit so I can see the whole document you can see how things are spaced out now and things look a little better no widows no orphans around and paragraphs keep things together a little better let's explore some more features here of LibreOffice Writer I'm going to use control home to make sure that I'm on the first page the beginning of the document then I'm going to select the layout tab in the layout tab I'm going to go way over here and select the page settings tool and then in the page settings for my first page style I'll go to area bitmap and maybe I'll try this marble tool and apply that and that gives me this marbly texture or marbly bitmap behind the first page style there are other bitmaps that I can use or if I don't have anything that I like I can import my own bitmaps to be used here let's say OK but now because of the way the page background fills in up to the margin edges it seems it would look a little better if I had a little space between the margin and the beginning of the text so let's adjust that let's go and do the paragraph edit style I'll go to indents and spacing and then I'll add a little bit before the text maybe 0.8 and also add the same amount after the text and let's see what that looks like okay that pulls the text away from the margin edge looks a little better but I need to do the same thing with the heading one paragraphs so heading one paragraph paragraph edit style go to index and spacing make that be 0.08 okay you need to be a little careful if you're going to use bitmaps or graphics in the background of pages I've seen even professional high-quality printed newsletters and magazines where the artists have gone a little crazy and they've selected background colors for their pages that make the text extremely hard to read so be very conscious of your audience make sure that when you make this nice artistic decoration of your design make sure you don't make it so artistic that the readers have trouble reading it now we've made quite a few formatting changes here so one thing we always need to do is go back to the table of contents right click and make sure that we've updated that anytime you edit the document and start moving things around you may cause some of the heading one paragraphs to move to a different page and that will be a mistake in the table of contents unless before you stop working on the document you update that table of contents 
Since this is a newsletter and it's kind of time sensitive, let's add something at the very end of the document. So I'll do control end. And in this last paragraph, I'm going to insert basically a date stamp. I will insert some text and then I'll select the insert field date tool and then I can double click on that date and choose either fixed or floating dates. In this case I'm going to choose a changing date because I may edit this newsletter and I want to keep track of the last edits and then I'll choose one of the date format styles. Now I probably want to share this newsletter with my friends and I probably want to do it electronically. Let me just jump to the top of the document, Control Home, and in the File tab there is an option to export a PDF file. If I attach this document to an email and send it to my friends, they may not have LibreOffice Writer and then they may not be able to open the newsletter. However, nearly everybody has Acrobat Reader. Nearly everybody has a program that can open PDF files. So to create a PDF version of this, I simply, in the File tab, simply go to the PDF Export tool, and then I choose a place where I'd like it to be. and choose a name for it and you see that I've been practicing so the name is already there so I'll say save and the system says wait a minute this file already exists do you want to replace it the answer is yes because I'm going to replace the practice version with my current version and now I can send this to my friends if I'm going to email it to my friends there's another option. I can say File, Send, and then I can say email the document or email it as an open document text file. I would do that if I know my friends have LibreOffice Writer. If they have Microsoft Word, I might email them a Microsoft Word format, but more often than not, I'll email the document as a PDF file. Once I select that, the system will open the default email program for my computer, and then I can go ahead and email this as an attachment. Let's do a quick review of some of the things that were covered in Lesson 7. File properties can be defined and used to insert text into document titles, into the headers, and into the footers. Date fields can be inserted and they have many optional formats for displaying the date fields. Paragraph styles can be modified by right-clicking on a style in the sidebar or by right-clicking on a paragraph in the text body and selecting a context menu option. Text and graphics can be copied from other Windows applications and then they can be pasted into a document. And the rule of thumb is never to type text or create images that are already available in other documents. Tables of contents can be generated from entries that use a particular paragraph style. The default style for tables of contents is Heading 1. If you're working on a custom book, there's a way to change that. You may have your own particular paragraph styles that you want to include in the tables of contents. The table of contents should always be updated before you print a document, since the edits that you've done may move paragraphs to different pages. The book view can be used to see how a multi-page document will look when it's printed. And PDF files can easily be exported from LibreOffice and they should be used whenever you're sending documents to individuals who may not be using LibreOffice. Well, congratulations. If you've made it all the way through the lessons in this collection and got to the very end of Lesson 7, you probably can discard that old, cobwebby, dusty typewriter because it's truly obsolete now that you have the power of creating documents using LibreOffice Writer.